welcome to class number two. Uh, today we're going to uh, focus on the actual scroll. And like last week, we're going to do similarly, giving you several drills to kind of work on that. And you made a lot of good progress last week. I saw a lot of improvement. We're really excited about that. And today we have two students that were here last week. And so what, why don't we just go around real quick and introduce uh, ourselves so we, we know who each other are. And you all know me, I'm Keith Black. I've been doing this for a long time. So, let's start with Gail. Gail. I'm Jana. Hi. Kathy. Catherine. Christy. Christy. I'm Richie. All right, and thanks to Richie for helping out. I really appreciate it. He's doing a great job getting the full scene back on, on top here. I really appreciate it. But anyway, today I want to talk about the stroke, but I'd like to do a little review, too, from last week. I think that's real important to do summarize you know because pool is like any other uh, skill you know it's cumulative you know there's certain parts of uh, correct aim alignment and stance that are absolutely essential in order for you to have a good stroke in other words if your alignment and your stance and aim aren't correct it doesn't matter how good your stroke is you're still your body's not going to be on the correct line okay. now when we talk about aim, you know, from last week, the main thing I want you to remember is the hard work to do is while you're standing up above the shot. Now that sounds like a real simple thing, but I've been playing lead for years and I watch all these players, they get down on the shot and they don't even really aim it until they get up, get down like this and then they're moving their body all around like that. You do the hard work on a very simple shot while you're standing up above. And you should be about a cue's length. You don't want to hug the table, because look, I can't see as well here as I can from back here. In other words, I see exactly where I need to get, and I draw that line all the way back. And that's what we did last week. Okay? Let's go through the whole thing again. It won't take that long. But, you know, I want you to continue to do the drills that we talked about last week. But on every single shot, you find a main point and you draw the target line all the way back. But actually, before you do that, I, and I remember talking when, when Kathy first got to class, breathe and relax. This pool is not a tension sport. It's a, your shoulders and arms and your wrists and everything should be completely relaxed. And as far as holding the cue, almost like holding a, a I came to company. Very important. Breathe and relax. And when I say uh, uh, find the aim point and the target line, it's it's real real important to kind of visualize what you want to do. You know, like any other sport. In other words, I'm seeing the cue ball, contact the cue ball, and making it in the corner pocket. And I'll even visualize where the cue ball is going to go. Am I going to roll forward? Am I going to stop it? Am I going to try to bring it back? Any of those things. But let's take a basic, simple shot like this. We'll put the cue ball right on the reinforcer here. All right, I see my aim point. It's a straight in shot. That's also the contact point. Draw the line all the way back. But one of the key things now is to make sure your chin, your cue, and your right toe. Last week we used a piece of tape on the floor to kind of show you where your where your stance should, should begin. So I so I see the aim point target line all the way back. From this position, I'm ready to take my stance. Okay? Everything's already covered. Everything's aligned. already aligned. That's the key. Find all that correct alignment before you actually step into the shot. So I swing down. And again, right there, that's where I really have to work on my warm-up strokes. And, and this is kind of your opportunity to kind of laser in the shot. It's your last chance to make sure that you've got everything in line. Nice warm-up strokes till I feel really good about the shot and then just let it go. Okay. Exactly. I, I really, really kind of... <laughs> My cousin has been shooting pool as long as I have. Yeah. He's, he gets down and then he makes three. And as soon as that class was over, I said, oh. yeah. 
It's like, you do this all the time. And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so after the class, I called him and I said, man, you know how you go down and do those adjustments? And he said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And another thing we learned last week, I'd like you to remember too, and it's real important, is where the pockets are. And I gave everybody one of these training aids, and uh, it seems like a simple thing, but even Richie, who's a very advanced player, got a lot of this as well. But you notice this shot that I have right here, it's a, it's a straight in shot. But the center of the pocket is always the center of the outer jaw. You never aim for this part of the pocket, you always aim out here. Now the reason for that is if you're shooting the one from a different angle, look at what part of the pocket the one would be going in from that angle. Way over here, wouldn't it? Now if I was shooting the one from this angle, look at the part of the pocket it's going in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on each shot that you shoot, there's a professional side and there's an amateur side. Now let's say I was cutting the one into the corner pocket to hear which side would be the amateur and which side would be the professional side. The right would be the professional side? Which side? The right? Exactly. And why? Why would, it be the, why would this side be the professional side? Well, because your shot is more closely in right to the center of that area that you prescribe as your... Yeah, the center of the pocket. The center of the pocket. And watch what would happen if I hit the amateur side. I'll hit the rail over here, and it will bounce and, and hang up. But watch what happens if I hit the this side of the pocket. It goes right in, doesn't it? Yes. So it increases your percentage of, of making the shot. I remember when I learned that. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. Hey, Good. Good. All right. We're, we're doing a review right now. And, uh, and, and what was your first name? Terry. Terry. This is Terry and Chris. They were here last week as well. We have two new students here. Catherine. We have Catherine and uh, Christy. Christy. Okay. All right. Now, we've kind of gone over, uh, you know, what we did last week. And, you know, and again, I want you to continue to ask questions about that. And again, with Vic, go ahead, Richard. Uh, for the new ones that, that missed it, if you do miss a class, if you go on to his name on YouTube, you can watch the class that's recorded and not miss anything. So if you miss a class, you couldn't make it, you were busy, you can go on to get it on YouTube under Pete Lofka and you can watch what the class was anyways, which is cool. All right, while we're, while we're doing the uh, stroke uh, uh, lesson, it, it'd be a good idea if you have a key in your, go ahead. I've got a question regarding last week's lesson. Sure. When I was working on the cut shots last week, I was putting the imaginary ball there. Does the imaginary ball replace the object ball as far as the angle you're trying to put in, into the pocket with? Okay. Or can you set up a standard type of measure on the, imag on the imaginary ball that will work all the time? Okay, the imaginary ball that Jan's talking about is the ghost ball technique for cutting shots okay. in. Now, uh, I have a little tool over here that will help explain that. In fact, uh, we'll aim the little arrow at the center of the pocket and put an object ball right here. Now, literally, the imaginary ball or the ghost ball would be the imaginary ball that you're aiming at the center of in order to cut the 10 ball in the pocket. But I think what you're asking is, is how do you come to that position? The, the answer is that no matter where I put the cue ball, Jan, this is the aim point. Uh, so I can pretty much rely on the center point yeah. of the ghost ball the all center, the time. The center of the ghost ball all the time. Okay, because yeah. I'm placing that based on the angle I want on the object ball to right. begin with. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. And balls are the same, and balls should be the same size, so you, once you get used to that, you should you should adapt to that. But you have to practice it to become proficient at it. Okay, that's it, In the I beginning, am. you got to find it, but once you find it and practice it, it becomes part of you, and then it, it becomes part of your aiming, and once it becomes part of your aiming, it'll get to a better spot. Well, I found I didn't have any difficulty getting the first one, which was the most shallow of the two. But when I got to the more radical one, I really had a hard time getting it in the 
sometimes at that point. Is that because I'm not hitting the ghost ball in the proper position? Sometimes when you have the two and they're separated, if you have it okay here, if you start there and then do it five or six times and then just move a little bit and a little bit, you can slowly get okay. to the other spot. Okay. Yeah. If, if a step, if a jump messes with you, you can go just a little bit and, and work your way towards that. Thank you. Yeah, finding the center of the ghost ball is, is not easy to do. Uh, Eventually, what's going to happen after you practice the ghost ball technique is that it'll become automatic. In other words, you cock it at balls at that angle so many times, you just see it clearly. We call that automatic aiming. You know, uh, sometimes uh, one of the things I always want to warn students about when they're learning is thinking too much about shots is hazardous. All right? <laughs> Analysis paralysis, okay? <laughs> And analysis paralysis. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, analysis and that's really important because, uh, again, that was one of our themes from last week is you want to have fun playing the game. But to be honest, if I ask Richie or myself if I actually use the ghost ball technique anymore, no, I really don't. Because I've played for over 50 years. And I see the line, you know, just because I've shot probably. 10,000 shots like this before. And that's what the importance of doing drills and some of the techniques we're going to learn today with this drill. But I have a quote today, as I do with every class, and I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, this is from Willie Moscone. He's the 15-time world champion. He said, the majority of shots should be executed by stroking the cue ball in the center. Now, let me explain what he really meant by that. Now, when you look at a round cue ball, there's a vertical axis, okay? Now, for the first four or five classes that we're gonna do, we're gonna try to keep the cue tip on the vertical axis. And that could be high, middle, or low. In fact, we're gonna do a drill uh, related to that today. But as soon as you get to the left or right of the vertical axis, the cue ball will spin and it will also deflect throw the cue ball offline. And if, so, you're, if you're not proficient at what you're thinking or doing, that little bit of spin makes a huge difference. Oh, it'll, make huge. You, it'll make you miss the shot. So let's try it. In fact, that's what Richie and I will be working on today, is make sure you're hitting the center of the cue ball. Because a lot of times you'll miss a shot and you'll wonder, well, how did I, how did I miss that? Mm -hmm. And usually it's because you're off center and it throws the cue ball. Either deflects the cue ball or curves it. And that's another reason why you want to keep the cue stick fairly level. As soon as you elevate the back, back end of your cue and you hit it slightly off center, the cue ball will curve. And that's an a, you know, extreme problem. <laughs> oh, let me uh, check that. Actually, when you do get uh, to where you start, Looking at that, you'll be amazed at how much, if you're not on the perfect center, right. you'll be amazed at how much it changes things that you weren't even aware of. Right. And it, it, it happens so easy when you're at the beginning spots because you're not used to what's happening. Later on, you'll become used to it and you'll start using it on purpose, but in the beginning, things happen and you totally don't need to and it just does it. And it's crazy how much a little bit of sideways just pulls oh, yeah. everything up. Okay. Most people in the league overuse it. They do. Because you don't need a lot of English, even when you're playing the championship pool. <laughs> a couple things I didn't cover last time that are important, I think, that, uh, you know, this chalk. If you watch ESPN and watch good players, they usually chalk in every shot. And that's kind of important. But it's also important to know how to properly chalk the tip of your cue. If you notice my cue, tip is shaped about like a nickel or a dime. You want a rounded uh, surface. The reason for that is because when you're contacting a rounded surface, like a cue ball, if it's flat, in other words, your tip is too flat, it'll slip off and you'll miss it. Usually a thumb is about a nickel's. Yeah, a thumb is perfect, yeah. The roundness of a thumb. Now, when you chalk, this cue is going to occur in the middle of the tip. They occur on the perimeter on the outside edges. So all you have to do when you chalk is hold your chalk at about a 45 degree angle and just nice coating around the edges. You don't really need to grind the chalk into the top like that. 
it's a nice, and that's kind of important. And always and put the you, chalk if you watch it, face you up. It also. Yeah. All right, the stroke itself. And we talked a little bit about this last time. Oh yeah. I don't make enough of chalk. Oh okay. All right. The chalk actually keeps the tip from slipping off the cue ball and just killing that horrible sound you hear like like you're hitting a, a piece of metal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That's called a miscue. And, and that's the reason why good players will chalk on almost every shot. And uh, again, I see these red chalk. You know, one of the things I'd like to do, what both Richie and I can do today, is we'd like to examine your Q-tips to make sure they're properly uh, fixed up. I have a bunch of... I, I have some tools in my, my uh, bag over here that we can help you. And also, Richie, if you need a new tip on your Q, he's, he's in charge of all pool operations. He's our pool manager here, and he can help you with that as well. Okay, the stroke itself. Uh, now, the grip, we talked a little bit about that last time. And we have some new students today, so I'll do a little review on that. And go ahead and follow along with me as we do this. But uh, I, always, I always think it's like a, a piece of fine art when you hold it. You want to cradle it gently. Something that you have great respect and love for. Now, when I say cradle, I don't mean hold it in the tips of your fingers, because look what happens. There's no, there's no, uh, it creates tension in your wrist. You want to cradle the fingers underneath so they're relaxed and the thumb pointed straight down. In other words, if you really look at how what I'm holding, it's only really the thumb and my first finger that are applying any pressure. These last three fingers are just kind of along for the ride. Now, why do I want such a relaxed grip on the cue? Let me explain the importance of that. A relaxed grip and a light grip on the cue allows the cue stick to, to stay level when you swing it back and you follow through. Notice how that my wrist hinges a little bit on the back stroke, and then as I go through, it kind of slides through my fingers like that. That's the biggest problem with beginners and you know people that haven't played much is the, is the death grip on the cue. It actually causes a sawing motion up and down, and there that creates miscues and creates inaccuracies and all all kinds of issues. But one of the things I'd like you to work on and, and think of when you're doing this is think of a pendulum on a clock. You notice when a pendulum swings back on a clock, it'll actually go back exactly as far as it goes through. And that's one of the things we want to learn today, is how to make sure when we swing the cue back that it accelerates all the way through. A lot of times what you'll find, in fact, I've got a little uh, practice tool here. You'll notice it has a red circle where I can put the cue ball, but I'm not going to put it on there yet. And also it has a line, and it has inches of follow through this end. So one of the first things I want you to do, and you, if you can't use this, you can simply use the spot of the table. In fact, I want you to just practice your pre-shot routine, settling down on the shot, but then taking some practice strokes and seeing how far you'll follow through. Just imaginary cue ball. Don't even use a cue ball, yet, but just practice going through. And you can also see how straight it's going. Is it going to the center of the pocket? So when you're working with your partner today, just practice setting down on the shot, use the spot, aim point, target line, swing down, take your warm up strokes, back and through, back and through. Just practice that till you feel like you can go straight through every time. I mean, there's a lot of tools you can use. You can use a bottle, you can use the edge of the rail like this. That's another way to do it. But people can get There's bored a, with that. Yeah, that's People tedious. can get really bored with that because it's not a lot. But it's important to, to not only learn it, to work it till it becomes part of your setup. 
when it, if it's not part of your setup, you can still have the wobble and the front moving side to side. But if you practice the stroke and you watch it, it becomes smooth, and then all of a sudden it becomes part of your whole process. And when it becomes exactly. part of your process, it gets a little easier. Yeah. In the beginning, it might not be, but it will. Richie's exactly right. The pre-shot routine is your comfort zone. That's what you you know use when you're under pressure or you're playing a match. Or something. Yeah, go ahead. Um, as far as backhand position, I know Richie corrected me last week. I was way up. Front. Yeah, yeah. It, does that help the balance of the cue as you're going through the stroke? Okay. When you actually make contact with the cue ball, the arm should be straight down. And when you're setting up, the arm should be relaxed in a 90, 90 degree angle and straight down. That's real important because if, if I hold the cue back like this, yeah, if they you start created like all that. kinds of tension in your shoulder, haven't you? Well, you start using your shoulder. Yeah, and you start, start yeah, yeah. A lot of people yeah. start back here yeah. and then show them how that, how that looks. When they oh, start yeah, they the start back, back here like and this. They start from there. Then yeah. the stroke yeah. part's all out of whack because they're exactly. not in the right position from the start. And then that's not even close to where he started when he was straight. Exactly. So you want a nice relaxed position so the arm is hanging straight down so you can swing it back and swing it through. In other words, a, a stroke in pocket billiards is not a jab, it's not a hit, and you don't steer the cue either, trying to make it go straight. You let the momentum of the stroke release to the ball. In other words, that's, that, that keeps the, the wrist and the hand and everything relaxed. So you swing it back, let it go through, release all the way through. Now, as far as, as far as power of the stroke, if you want to hit it harder with more power, you simply, the stroke is a little bit longer. You swing it further back mm -hmm. and further through. Mm -hmm. That creates more power. Yeah. Where are you supposed to be? Okay, now that's going to depend on your physicality, <coughs> the length of your cue, uh, and a lot of factors, but generally you have a balance point about right here on your cue. And about five to six inches behind that is generally where you want to launch your hand. Because the main thing is, is that your arm be hanging straight down. We'll be looking for that today, you know, Richie and I. To find the balance of your cue, with your mind is about right here, and about five or six inches behind that is about perfect. But then that's going to change because sometimes you've got to stretch for a ball. Sometimes you've got to put more power into it. So, you know, the exact point of the cue where you're holding is going to be altered depending on the actual shot. But if it's, a, if, if it's a, just a basic shot like we were shooting earlier, just going to swing down. You'll notice that my arm is straight down. Mm -hmm. And then when I hit the cue ball, it's still straight down, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. But, you know, I can't overemphasize the, the part of the stroke that allows the cue to accelerate through the ball. But if you want to try this tool later on, that's, that's good. You can actually see exactly how you're doing. We'll imagine a cue ball right there and we'll do some practice strokes. And you should go to, you know, about six to seven inches through the ball. And that's really important. And you also want to make sure the cue's not popping in the air or swinging to one side or the other. It's a lot of, like cutting in golf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of similarities yeah. in, in yeah. golf. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's uh, actually go to a few drills, and uh, uh, I want you to have fun with these. Some of them are going to be more challenging than others, and, uh, and you know, we'll work with you, and your partner can help you out and all that. But literally, in pocket billiards, the most important shot in the pool is the stop shot. And I'd like to, you know, kind of spend some time on that today. You notice I have some, I have some white reinforcers on the table. Now, you might have asked, well, why is the stop shot the most important shot in the pool? Because it is the whole basis and foundation for playing position. Okay. When you can make the cue ball, you say, skid along the cloth, so when it hits the ball, 
it'll make it and stop yet without moving forward or backward. Now, some of you may not be ready for that, that are just beginning and that's fine. But I want to introduce it you know, as well. But literally, on a shot like this, if I want to stop it, I'm fairly close to the 10 ball. So I'm going to hit it almost dead center, maybe slightly below, almost dead center. But you'll notice I'll accelerate the tip through the ball. If I don't accelerate the tip through the ball and have a good follow through, the ball will start rolling by the time it gets there. So in slow motion, yeah. that acceleration is like a backward twist while it's moving. It sort of just yeah. freezes, and then all the energy is just transferred to the ball, and there's nothing left, and it just stops. Exactly. It's skidding. It's no forward roll or backward roll. Now, if I move the cue ball a little further back, it's a little different. I have more distance between the one ball and the cue ball. So now, to make the cue ball stop, I'm going to have to go just slightly below center. And I'm going to need a little bit more stroke, a longer back swing and more follow. Swing down, take nice warm up strokes, a little bit lower. In other words, you, uh, you want the cue ball to be skidding when it hits the ball so it doesn't, doesn't go forward. If you're putting two power on that. Well, that one I used more power because I had more distance between the balls. But you're right, Kathy, I probably used more than I needed to. I could have stopped it a lot easier. Yeah, both of them have a bit of power on it. That means you're just tapping it. If it just taps it, it would lose the skid and then become a forward roll. Right. So sometimes they shoot too soft and it starts out as a draw shot or a stop shot and then it loses all its energy, becomes a forward roll, and then it follows it right into the pocket. Like if it's right in the pocket and you go do a soft stop shot and they skid it but it loses power and then it just becomes a forward roll and it rolls right in. Yeah, nothing I know. I really get it. Quickly and get the wrong shot and the cue ball rolls in right after the ball. Right. Yeah. So that's yes. it's lost all control <laughs> that you had and just become a forward rolling ball. Yeah. So that that's why it, it's important to develop your stroke and a stop shot will develop your stroke. And also, as we learn about cut shots, for example, if I hit a stop shot. On a cut shot, it's actually called, uh, has a different meaning. But basically what it'll do is it'll tell us exactly where the cue ball is going. Like if I hit a stop shot on the 11, it'll go at exactly 90 degree line, we call that the tangent line. And this, this will help us learn to play position as we, as we become more, more as, uh, as you get comfortable educated. with that, you learn to incorporate that in your brain. You can see how it's gonna, push one ball and, and then it's going to go that way, you end up starting to see multiple things because you're looking at the shot, but then after the shot, it's going to go that way and yeah. you start to, it, it becomes part of your thinking and you can see where that's going. In fact, if I know the cue ball is going to hit towards this diamond, I know it's going to come this direction, so it comes approximately to the diamond number two. So you learn how to play position by hitting that stop shot. And it doesn't come fast, you have to work at it. And Could we see that, please? Oh, sure. If I cut this 11 ball on an angle, and I hit that same shot, we call it a stop shot center ball. See, it took the tangent yeah, line over here, and then it right 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 on and then off right 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 <laughs> And that's how we learn how to play position. But you know, in this class, the first four classes, we're gonna focus on hitting the cue ball where you're aiming and developing your stroke. We're not gonna worry a whole lot about position, but it's important to understand that because that's something that you know, you'll be very interested in as your game you know, gets better. Oh, there's one other thing I just thought. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, as you learn stuff, if you don't learn the fundamentals correctly, you can only go so far before the fundamentals start to hurt you. If you don't learn the fundamentals on the proper stance and the proper position, you may learn a few shots, but if you don't get the basics down, it'll actually hurt you farther up because you never really learned proper basics. And the stuff he's showing on the position and alignment and all that stuff, it's amazing how 
quickly, that's going to fix things on, on beginning to play. Okay, this is, you can follow this actually in your handout, but we're going to put a bunch of balls, kind of aligned along the, the center spot here. And we're going to, this is the drill that I really like everybody to work on today. And it's a real simple drill, but it's not, not real easy because you're actually going to have a goal or objective on each shot. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set up a straight in shot using the spot. On the first shot, I'm simply going to hit a stop shot. So I'm going to play position on the edge. So I'm going to make it stop right there so I can shoot the edge. Do all my practice uh, drills. Aim point, swing down. Target line back, swing down. Get nice warm up strokes. And then once I feel comfortable with that, then we're going to learn how to make the cue ball roll forward and control the speed. You know, this is real important because as you learn the game and you start playing game ball and other games, you're going to want to locate the cue ball in certain positions. So now I'll start out and Instead of hitting the center of the ball, you'll notice on my bridge, I'll elevate just a little bit. But you notice my cue tip, my cue is still relatively low. So I'll try to roll the cue ball just gently up to the 15. Because he's not hitting low, when he hits the ball, he's going to have leftover energy, and that goes forward. And you notice my tip was a little bit above center, so the cue ball began to roll forward. And you know, have fun with this. Just start working on your, your uh, forward roll shot. We call it follow. This time I'll try to roll it all the way to the 12 ball. But have a goal or objective. And when you're standing up above the shot, kind of visualize exactly what you want to have. You know, that's the mental part of the game that's so important. That's not only looking at what you're doing with the five ball, it's starting to allow your brain to think about what's going to happen afterwards. That's, that's important. So for the uh, for the uh, the stop shot, it's lower. So with the rolling shot, it's higher. Yeah, you you want to you want to you want to you know you'll notice my bridge changes. It comes up a little higher, but my cue stays relatively level, and I'm hitting it above center. This time, I'm going to actually roll the cue ball all the way to the bottom. This time, I'm going to need more stroke. Okay, more stroke. Therefore, my bridge will be a little bit further away like this. Uh, good, good. There was more backswing and more follow through and had more power behind it. But you notice when I, when I hit the ball, it, I never am using muscle or forcing anything. It's a natural release from the ball. And that's what you want to develop in your stroke is a little bit of acceleration the ball, but not with your muscles, not a kick, not a jab. Okay. All right, now we're going to do the other part of it. Uh, we're going to put a little backspin on the two balls. Okay, and we do the exact opposite of what we just did. This time, I'm going to lower my bridge, but also keep the cue relatively level. You can't keep it perfectly level because the rail gets in the way, right? All right, I visualize drawing the ball back to the seven. Find my aim point, target line, swing down. You'll notice that instead of hitting it here for a stop shot, I lowered it a full key tip. But I'm only going to draw it just a short distance. See how it was a shorter stroke, and I just went, didn't go that far through. And this is how you learn to play the game. This is how you learn to control right. the cue ball. Now this time, I'm going to take a little bit longer stroke and draw the cue ball about to where it is right now, by the six. Swing down, a little bit longer stroke. Not quite as far as I'd like. Let's try one more. Draw is the most difficult of all. Stop shots are easier. 
and follow shots are a lot easier to control. Swing down. And sometimes when you draw us back, you gotta move your key line away if it's straight in like that. But anyway, uh, the further I want to make the cue ball draw, the more stroke I need, which is a longer pendulum and more acceleration through the ball. This time we're going to take it all the way back to the side pocket, so you'll notice I'm going to use a lot more stroke. Peter, yeah, go ahead. When you do bring it back, yeah, and short or longer, you always have to be at the same low spot. No, uh, that's one of the things I've noticed teaching this class for many years is that a lot of a lot of students don't hit it low enough as they should. Now, if the lower I hit the cue ball, the easier it is to draw it back. But then there's also the worry or the risk of miscuing. So you have to balance that out. Because if you go too low, you know, the, the cue tip might slip off. But when you're doing a draw shot, you absolutely have to chalk your cue. Because miscues can happen when you go down to the bottom of the ball. And on this very last one, we'll use a little bit more stroke. We'll try to bring it back to the side pocket. I'm visualizing it. Blue point, target line, swing down. It was on line. Yes. And then have some fun with that. You know, the draw shot is a really neat shot to learn, but it's by far the hardest you know, of the three strokes we've been talking about. And the, the, the way to get the, the ball to draw a little quicker is to actually go down a little bit lower, like this. There is a spot, there is a spot yeah. just above the belt where it's like a magic spot where the ball just floats backwards all yeah. by itself. It does it on the top also, but around the center of the ball, there is a spot, a magic spot. Um, <laughs> if I had the rugby ball, I'd yeah. it out. I'll, in fact, I'll probably order one with the line three. And on, on that spot, it's, yeah. uh, it's just above the belt, and all of a sudden, it just comes back in. Yeah, and if you're having trouble drawing the ball, here's usually the problem. 90% of the time, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay, and then, it, then the cue is coming up in the air as you, as you stroke. But if you accelerate through the cue ball and the cue stick stays low all the way through, the cue ball has to draw back. It can't do anything else. But, but to be able to do that is easier said than done because you don't want to muscle it. You want, want a nice, you know, smooth release from the ball. But in the beginning, I'd rather you work on the stop shot and the rolling ball you know, and controlling that because when you're in an actual game of eight ball, that's a lot more common shot and a more reliable shot. The draw is important, you know, for players like Richie who play in tournaments and things like that. If you had any questions about any of that, okay. Uh, I always like to end each class with a few game, uh, game winning shots. Um, let me do just a few. Is that what the third diagram is? Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, the first one is, is kind of important, and it's a shot that everybody has problems with. But let's say you're about to win the game in the eight ball, and the eight ball is on the rail. All right, what's the conventional wisdom about making a ball when it's frozen? What have you heard? Leave a credit card link between oh, the Oh, you heard from my other class. Hit <laughs> <laughs> the rail with the ball at the same time. Yeah. Leave a credit card with the All right. Yeah. All right. No, I didn't take your card. No, you're, you're exactly right. Where did you hear that? Other people who take oh, it and you don't have to take it. took my class, I guess. <laughs> no. Anyway, Catherine's, Catherine hit the nail on the head. The worst thing to do is hit too much ball. The eight ball will never, ever go in. All right? That's the most common mistake that's made on rail shots. And I'm bad at it. 
hitting too much ball first. That, mean the, the that means that before you hit the rail, you actually contact the eight. And if you contact the eight too early, you'll hit the rail and come over here and just wobble it. Yeah. That's the most common mistake. Kind of noting it earlier, aren't you? But uh, Mark Wilson, the um, Moscone Cup captain, best players in the world, it says that you want to make sure to make the ball, if you hit it at credit cards, go with the rail first. Because the rail will give a little bit and then exactly. it will flex as it's going down. Exactly. Down. Be where it's supposed to be. The, the cue ball sinks into the rail. You can kind of see a credit card's width. And then when it comes off, the eight ball just hug the rail and go in as nice as you can. I have a hard time with them damn rail subs, too. They really yeah. piss me yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen carefully, you'll actually, you off. you'll actually hear a sound. You'll hear two sounds when I hit this. And also, when you have a rail shot, it helps to hit high rolling ball. That makes it easier, too. We're not going to do English today. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But listen for the sound of the shot. I'm going to try to you know, execute just what I told you. actually hitting the rail slightly before and that's the way to make sure you make a, make a shot like that. And obviously if you hit too much rail first you're going to miss it but your odds of making it are much better if you favor just a hair or a credit card before the ball because it sinks in and makes the ball plug the rail. Yeah. Is there something you can do with alignment when you're trying to make those really close cut shots but you're missing the ball just by the stretch? Yeah. Of analysis or something, you know, it's like I have a tendency to do that with a lot of my shots. I'm so close, but yet so far away. You right. know what I mean? So, is there something I can do with my mind that's kind of complicated to what I'm doing by missing the ball? Too? Well, if, you're, like if, so you're doing, if you're doing everything the way he showed you on the proper alignment, hitting where you're looking, it yeah. may be uh, knowing that I miss to the left most of the time. If I make a small adjustment in the way I'm aiming to the right, it might compensate that. Because if you're in the right position, you're in the right frame, you're in the right everything, you're stroking it good, you're shooting it, but you're missing, it may just be the fact that you're picking a spot to the left too much. And a, a, a mental adjustment on how you're picking your spot might, might correct that. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, that's good. Makes sense. In fact, uh, what, what I would say on, on those you know, adjustments is that you're going to be doing that for your entire career of playing pool. Because some days you're gonna, you're gonna be a little off and you're gonna know, so why am I missing shots to that side? Well, you know what Johnny Archer and Earl Strickland, a lot of these great champions do? They look to their feet. Isn't that amazing, your, your actual stance? Because watch what happens if I'm standing up above a shot, if I move my feet a little that way, I turn my shoulders and my cue, move a little that way. Like Johnny Archer, you know, uh, he's, he's been world champion like five times. When he takes his stance, he really spends time setting, getting the line above the shot. But as he swings down, he'll make sure that everything is perfectly aligned and he'll adjust his feet. So that's one of the tips that I can give you is if you're hitting him offline like that, readjust your feet until the cue falls right into the line. I found the, I yeah. found the beginning yeah. thing when I when I first come to a table. I found it in a DVD and the book, where it starts with aligning a simple stop shot and shooting it like five times or ten times in a row. And if you shoot it, and three out of the five times you're you're going off to the left. Okay, this time I woke up on this side of the bed. Tomorrow I might wake up on that <laughs> side of the bed. But if you shoot if you shoot that yeah. if you shoot that five or ten times. Now, all of a sudden, it'll be like, wow, I keep going to the right. And then I make that mental adjustment a little bit to let, all of a sudden I'm back on center. If you go to a center, a stop shot that you learn, if you start with a stop shot, you'll be off to the left, right, and all of a sudden you're back focused on center, and then I would go from there. Richie's exactly right. I do drills every day, and I'll set up uh, object balls here and the cue ball here. And I won't stop shooting them until I can make 10 in a row and stop perfectly dead behind. And sometimes you're if you can make a straight in stop shot, it practices your stroke, your alignment, and everything. In fact, before a tournament, that's kind of what I'll do to, to warm up. I found that twice, yeah. the book and the DVD. And it's yeah. Like yeah. 
Okay, one other game money shot and, and then we'll move on. This is one that uh, everybody misses. Everybody misses, even good players. But there's a trick to it. And we learn this about where the pockets are. How many of you have had the shot where you have a real thin cut that's close to a pocket? Oh, yeah, Anybody have any problems with that shot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can I can give you a hint on this to make sure that you make a lot more of these. Now, number one thing I want you to look at, the pocket is right here, isn't it? The uh, center of the outer jaw. This is the professional side of the pocket, that's the amateur side. From now on, whenever you have this shot, I want you to purposely overcut it. Because look what's happening when I cut this ball. I'm actually cutting it very thin like that. But it's turning the, the object ball, putting the English on it, throwing it over to this side of the line. So to make this shot consistently, you absolutely have to overcut it. In fact, when I see a shot like this and I have to make it to win a game, the shot to go way over, way over. I watch league and I watch you know players and classes and stuff. They miss this shot consistently on this side because if it catches any part of that knuckle there, it won't go in. But if you always remember on these cut shots to overcut. In other words, I'm aiming the cue ball to go way over to this side of the pocket. Notice I actually hit left of that right line, and that's that's the professional side. So whenever you have a cut shot, always overcut. And it's the same if it's this direction as well. And when you practice, always practice cutting from both sides. The reason why that's so important is when I get a cut shot from this side, it looks different. When you cut to the left or cut to the right, you're going to notice that. One way is easier than the other. <laughs> That's your favorite. Yeah. Now, for me, this is my less favorite because I'm right eye dominant. I, I, I have an easier time cutting it. Since it's on the other pocket, we make the training age. Yes. So we yes. So the professional side is still on the right, as, as Richie is facing, correct? Exactly. Okay. That's the professional side. But watch how thin I get this. I'll, I'll aim to overcut it. But if I hit, hit the ball to any part of this pocket, I'm going to miss it every time. Are you hitting center on your cue ball? Yeah. And we're, staying, ball. we're staying in the vertical. Yeah, we're not even going to mess with English. <laughs> Maybe to class number five, we'll talk a little bit about it. But you have to learn how to play the game on the vertical axis before you can start using English, because you absolutely have to hit the cue ball with your aim. When you use English, you have to compensate curve and deflection, which is a whole different ball now. Okay. But everybody grab a table, grab a partner, and reach it out. Come on. I stole one of these. Yeah, you can have one. If you want a training aid, uh, there's some over here.